I felt shamed, right? Like I felt like I was being shamed for something that is a natural thing, right? So how do you, you know, what kind of advice do you give to men? Like, I don't want to shame my boys when I, if I discover that they, you know, bumped into porn and, and found it and things like that. How do you address that? Like, what's something, because for me, right? Like I, I had to go on a car drive with my dad. He was so annoyed. He didn't even want to have to go on this drive and talk to me about it. But, um, it was almost like he was like, just don't get caught kind of thing, <laughs> which, mm-hmm. you know, as a young kid, it was, it was a weird, I'm like, weird. Okay. Uh, but you know, looking back, I'm like, you know, I'm glad it happened. It was something for me to understand, like, you know, I don't need this kind of stuff, but at the same time, I don't think I deserve to feel so much shame behind having feelings or desire for, uh, you know, wanting to see a woman naked, right? Like that, I don't think that that's, uh, something I want to, uh, put down onto my kids right or feel that way does that make sense yeah no no absolutely man and and i think that's what makes porn i mean so dangerous right is on one side it's tugging at like a natural part of the man's heart like this desire for women this physical attraction to the beautiful female body that it that it is right it was made that way for a purpose sure. um, so it's tugging on that but going back to what i you know what i kind of layered the context at the conversation at the beginning right is we need to look at it and understand that it is a drug just like alcohol, just like cocaine, just like weed. You're going to have conversations with your children about the dangerous effects of those drugs, right? So yep. why wouldn't we include pornography in into that conversation? You know, this probably goes a little bit outside of the scope of work that, that, that I do. Obviously, I do have these conversations with men that are parents. I tell men, first of all, don't go have a conversation with your children if you still have the problem in your life mm, because like that, that is going to come across as unauthentic and kids pick up more... Uh, from the energy, from the way that you say things and just how you're operating than the actual words that you're saying. So please do not have a go conversation with your son or daughter about them not consuming porn if it's still a problem in your life. Take care of yourself first. And I'm speaking to the men, obviously, that have a problem there, which is the men that I serve and help. But, you know, I had Chris McKenna on, on my podcast. Chris runs an organization called Protect Young Eyes. What they do is they go around churches, schools, and other organizations and speak on the harmful effects of just all internet and all devices for young kids. And one thing he shared with me, and this is what he's taking into his family. I don't have any kids, so I'm speaking from just a place of opinion and maybe an expert here in this space. So I haven't actually lived this out in my own life. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, it's it's like it's going to be easy for me because the minute my kids go on the internet, like, oh, what does dad do? It's going to be like, oh, he's been his porn addiction coach for however many years at, at, at that point right. i think you need to get, i think you need to get in front of it man and chris said like porn should be the most popular word in your house your kids should know it they should know how they should use it they should know how they should respond to it um and you shouldn't wait for them to come to you and be like ah, i saw something that i, I probably sh- shouldn't have seen because here's the thing russ is there comes a point in every single child's life when their eyes see something that their brain is not yet developed to handle so the human brain doesn't develop fully females around 22 23 the male brain 26 27. so if the average age of first exposure to pornography is 10 11 years old they're not Mm. even halfway through the development of their brain right so i think getting in front of it letting them know okay there's probably going to be a point in your life where you maybe are exposed to some images or videos uh, that you probably shouldn't see here's what i want you to do when you see those come to me and let's have the conversation so i think getting in front of it as much as you possibly can understanding the different types of content that's going to be out there and just play creating a space where when they do see it they feel safe to come to you and talk about it because what you don't want to do is you don't want them to see something that now creates this feeling inside of like oh i don't know if i should have saw that it made me feel really good let me go see it again but then they find out that it's probably something they shouldn't have seen but dad hasn't really talked to them about what are they going to do they're going to not go talk to you about it but they're still going to want to go get it because once again this is the this is how the human brain works when you can't have something you want to go figure out a way to get it so yeah i think getting in front of it as much as you possibly can uh but coming from a place of true authenticity.